the future is going to be based on connectivity, collaboration, and co-evolution of technologies. The ability of, of super connectivity means a much more pervasive, collaborative world. You need to understand technology to be able to win in this game. The innovation economy is the largest economy of the future. The future of medicine uh, is very exciting. Most of what we know about disease is very small. Uh, we're learning about disease. We need to understand where disease begins, probably at the atomic level and the genomic level, the level of the gene. New technologies will help us do this. So nanotechnology, uh, biotechnology, neurotechnology, together, nano, bio, neuro, even IT, combined convergent technologies will help us understand and develop a new kind of medicine called personalized medicine. And this medicine will give us a deeper insight into where disease begins and also be able to help us turn on or off certain kinds of genes that cause disease. Now why is this important? It's important because right now we don't really understand much of where disease comes from. You wait for something to happen to you, a pain someplace, or you get a test or you're not quite feeling right. So imagine having a world where we'd have wireless diagnostics that could monitor and watch us so we'd have an earlier idea of where disease begins. Nanotechnology, which is the manipulation of, of matter at the atomic level, will give us small machines. And these machines maybe will sit at the edge they're smaller than the tip of a human hair. And they will be inside of our body to be able to diagnose and watch and monitor, wait for emerging genes to combine before they become cancer, before they become kidney disease, before they become Alzheimer's. We'll be able to then know. Well, the future of medicine is really the combination of these different technologies that will help us do, will help us prevent disease, promote good health, and predict where we're going. Now, a very important part of the future of medicine will have to do with what's next for genomics or biotechnology. Right now, you can get your human genome mapped. Your genome mapped, uh, today, that costs about $1,000. Uh, there is a smaller set for under $300. But eventually, being able to get your personal genome, which will tell us a lot about your future health status, eventually that will be free. Uh, governments will give it away, uh, uh, commercial industries will give it away. Everybody getting their human genome map will give us an idea of what are the ways that the genes that are leading to disease. So you would likely find out maybe today what diseases you might be susceptible to over the next 10, 20, or 30 years. This is very valuable because then we can add preventive measures, certain drugs or medical devices or even diets could be developed to be able to help people put off disease or at least manage the disease that's emerging. And this would give us insight into large populations, which we don't have today. So a new area of geomedicine will emerge. We'll be able to scan entire populations and be able to then tell people what the likelihood is of certain diseases that may affect them and eventually to have more and more fixes whether they're genomic or designed drugs for them or even devices or ways to be able to help them live longer and healthier. So the idea of creating a global wellness society of people living longer and healthier is possible. Now you have to be careful though because if you look at the future some nations, such as China, are already having challenges finding work and providing habitats and food sources and water. Is it likely that we need more people on the planet? If you were to eliminate aging today, and people were to live an extra decade or two, the ability of the planet to support, to provide water, food, jobs, education, security, could be a problem. So we're going to have massive challenges in the future to be able to you know, manage, on one hand, life extension through better health care. On the other hand, 
is the carrying capacity of the planet capable of feeding, housing, providing jobs, economic sustainability for an extra billion or two pe billion people? This is going to be a big challenge in the future. If we create a sustainable future where people are healthier and living longer, can we afford that future? So you have to be careful. There are second and third order impacts from things that we do and we have to be careful about what they are because this is our home. We all have to live here. Today you have the choice of a boy or a girl if you want to have a baby. Today. Today you have some choices also of which embryo you want to put in the body. There are many choices today that give us an idea what the future is coming. I would forecast as a futurist that the future of designer babies is very soon, within the next 10 years. You will have choices. Why? Mapping up the human genome. You will likely be able to create a combination genome between a mother and a father. You take their genome and be able to determine what is the likelihood of choices of their offspring, of their children. Now, those choices may give you disturbing options that today you can't have. Uh, for instance, uh, while the baby, even before the baby is formed, in, uh, after the mother and father get together, there may be choices such as there's a gene we've discovered, or what's called a SNP, that shows us that there's a high potential of your child to have alcoholism. We could eliminate that, but what are the implications from eliminating that gene? We don't know. We have noticed now there is a, a, a gene associated with Alzheimer's or breast cancer. We know that today. We will be able to know which babies, as they're evolving, will be able to scan wirelessly their genomic profiles and be able to determine what diseases they may get. But we don't know yet if we change these genes whether the baby will be ultimately healthy and not get that disease, or what the interplay of these genes are with other genes. So this is very early in the game, but I'll make a forecast and I will say over the next 50 years or less, 30 years, we will have the ability to remove disease genes or turn them off. We will have the ability to make choices in terms of enhanced intelligence for our children, uh, height, uh, also to remove certain kinds of genes that are associated with behavior that we think are antisocial, such as violence, too much violence. We can, we'll be able to see that at the genomic level, or things like alcoholism. But when we get to other genes in terms of behaviors, it becomes very complicated, such as homosexuality. Will there be a gene for homosexuality? We don't know. We could likely find genes for certain kinds of behaviors as well as certain kinds of diseases. The question is, what do we want to eliminate? What do we want to keep? And many of these choices may be left up to individuals, not just governments, to regulate. I think inevitably uh, human beings uh, seek to improve themselves, to enhance themselves. Are we looking for the perfect human being? I don't know that there is any perfect human being. But I do think that uh, we as a species are always trying to improve ourselves, either through education or through uh, uh, commerce or through uh, even surgery to make ourselves beautiful. You think about it today. Uh, is fashion not a part of our world in terms of making ourselves more attractive? Uh, we improve ourselves with makeup or plastic surgery to make ourselves look more attractive to others.